Hey, everybody, what's up? I hope your Friday is shaping up to be a great one. Now, look, here's what's up with today's guest. Today's guest, uh, and by the way, this is a good one. This is one that you're going to want. We start off a little bit slow, like sometimes these do, and then it picks up steam. So here's what we talk about. Now, he, he, this guy's got an interesting background. He was a traveling, like, emergency RN nurse, uh, and then he moved into real estate. So here's some of the things we talk about. We talk about why communication is key. And obviously, you guys know that, but let, hear it from his perspective. Um, why hard work trumps talent? This guy came from the Midwest, took his uh, Midwestern uh, work ethic, and rolled it into real estate. Um, we spent some time talking about the systems and processes that he uses to cl- to to, tran- to to do his two hundred deals. He's done two hundred deals for the last ten years. So. Um, and we talk about, you know, very specifically why you have you guys should have uh, some plans, action plans, so that uh, in every step of the process, there is no guessing. It's assigned to one person. They open up their sheet. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. Uh, there it is. Um, we talked about why he suggests you should have different phone numbers for all your different marketing channels. And, uh, you know, we, on this episode, he talks about some tools and some companies, uh, to do some of that stuff that, that honestly, that I was not aware of. So, um, all right. I think you're going to love it. Welcome to super agents live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Real Estate Radio Experts. Now, Real Estate Radio Experts, look, man, radio. That if you guys want listing leads, radio is the best way to get them. They're basically referrals. We we have the radio host endorse you, say, hey, Toby's a great guy. He'll sell your house. Call him. And you know what? It's not as expensive as you think. Stop paying for Zulu, Trulia, Zillow, whatever. And get on the radio. So go to realestateradioexperts.com, fill out the getting started sheet, and uh, and let's chat. Uh, you can also go to Super Agents Live, and we have a, a Dominate Radio tab there. Check it out. Watch some of those videos. Now, as you guys know, before we get to this, uh, hashtag for this show is Unpack That Idea. My Twitter handle is Super Agents Live. And you know what? You guys are not going to want to miss future great episodes like this. So go to my website, superagentslive.com. Download my free ebook. That will give, you know, you're going to do, you're going to, I'm going to give you my ebook. You're going to give me your email address. And you know what that means is that means I can tell you guys when we have something special going on. So, you know, maybe we're going to do an event somewhere. And I don't, you know, that's, I talk about that kind of stuff to my list. And I don't always share it on the show because some, some of the times that's pretty dynamic. Um, it, it, look, and the other thing too, look, I know there's people out there listening to this show not in real estate. Now, here's the deal. I'm looking for an outside salesperson for radio. So if you, uh, if you think you know, you're dynamic enough to sell radio, um, hit me up. Let me know. I'd love to chat with you. And you know, anybody who does come on and uh, we, that we choose for this, for this role, you, you're going to be working closely with me. I'll, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll, you know, I'll coach you along the way. And uh, you know, we have a great culture here. So um, check it out. All right. Hey, let's get to it. Today on the show... I'm really excited. Today's guest, his market is Las Vegas. Now, he has a team of eight. Um, We're going to dig into this a little bit because out of that team of eight, he has one buyer's agent. So I'm very curious as to what uh, what that admin or or, uh, team overall looks like. Um, The last five years, he's averaged 230 transactions. So he's got a fantastic track record. Now, last year, he dipped a little bit down to 160. So we're going to dig into what happened there. Uh, total volume, 40 to 50 million. I am thrilled to welcome Jim Brooks. Hey, Jim, thanks for taking the time out, man. Happy to be on with you. So, Jim, I've given the audience just a nuts and bolts overview of, of what your business looks like. But before we get to your business, I want to know a little bit about who Jim is, right? I would like to get to know the man behind the machine. Sure, absolutely. Um, I, a uh, little Midwestern boy, grew up in a, in a small 
town in uh, mid-Michigan and um, actually moved out to Las Vegas in 1999 and I uh, was a traveling RN, ER, and trauma nurse at the time. Wow. <laughs> so uh, life's given me a couple different paths here. Um, 2003, I'd gotten burnt out on that and kind of fell into real estate and uh, just blessed by the good Lord, got into the market at the right time. Um, hard work ethic and, um, just lots of hours as I didn't have much of a, a past experience, you know, business experience, business education, all my education was in the medical field and, um, it's, it's been the best decision I ever made. I've been doing about 11 years now and, uh, love what I do. And, uh, the financial aspect of it has uh, been far superior to being an RN. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, you know, uh, that's an interesting story. And, you know, it, it's funny you mentioned work ethic in hours because as soon as you said Midwestern, uh, I actually wrote down work ethic because, you know, I have found that, you know, people who grow up on a farm or, or you know, in the Midwest, and that, you know, they're used to getting up early and, and working and, uh, you know, they always, they always sort of succeed. Is that is that your background, Jim? Yeah, I think a lot of it is, uh, you know, bringing how you're brought up and morals and what your family taught you. And, yeah, I was forced to work on a farm, I think, at the age of 10. And uh, even though I, I didn't, I grew up in the country, I didn't grow up on a farm, but I worked on a farm for many years. And, uh, yeah, I got into this business, and um, I was engaged to be married. I basically had $5,000 to my name to make the transition. And so I had... Uh, no other alternative success was the only option yeah and so i got into the business again i'm a good people person good communicator um honest and ethical person with good christian moral backgrounds but as far as the business experience and the marketing and all the stuff that usually goes hand in hand with successful uh real estate agents and teams i lacked all of that so i I made it up with uh, hard work. I literally, um, my first two years in the business, I tracked about a hundred hours a week. I was oh. working and, you know, when people say a hundred hours a week, it's, it's, that's pretty hard to fathom when you look at it. That's 16, 17 hours a day, seven days a week. And probably half of that time was wasted because I didn't know what I was doing, but yeah. I was committed to it and I was just do I was doing something. <laughs> right, 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 right. I, I, I've had those days where I'm just, I'm sitting there and going, I can't quit yet, but I, but I'm, I'm sitting there staring at my screen. I don't get on Yahoo or CNN, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing nothing. I've learned, I, for me, I've learned, you know, at, at long days, you know, I just walk away. So I know that no matter, you know, the, the one hour that I'm spending for my computer equals 10 minutes of productivity in the morning. So for me, I walk away. Right. Um, well, look, and, and here's the thing. So, so I have to think there's, there's a certain personality profile that goes into being, you know, somebody like an RN, whether it's a regular RN or trauma RN or whatever. Uh, what, what's your disc profile look like? Um, actually my disc profile is a little bit, um, and I don't remember all, I don't remember all the specifics of the dish. So you'll have to refresh my memory, but I'm a little bit different than what you would expect from, from being an RN and being that caring, compassionate person. I actually showed to have a, a real high drive and my disc profiles show that I should be, uh, you know, more a business operator. Interesting. Okay. So you, you knew where I was going with that, you know, because I, I would say, you know, like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 99 D 99 I. So I'm dominant and I'm very gregarious. The, the D and I, um, I, I have very little S and C and, and what I, and here's why I want to talk about this. What I've found is when people have a high S or uh, so my profile, high D I, high I, that's a listing agent. A high S, high C, right. much more paternal. Uh, they're they're much more suited to being a buyer's agent. Um, so, I, I guess my you were you you're saying that you fell more on the I side of it or on the D side of it rather yeah, than the S. Okay. I, uh, yeah. After you after you refreshed me, my memory on it, I was um, I was both of those very high D and fairly high I. Okay. 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 That's fine. Um, well then, okay. So, in terms of your your listing uh, buyer sellers, what does that percentage look like? Oh, we're eighty percent listing. Wow, seventy five to eighty percent listing. 
Okay. So, uh, okay. Let's talk about how you got there. Before we get to the listings um, and why you went from 230 to 160, when when any company can get you know real estate company can get to over a hundred, their systems are bulletproof. They should be bulletproof. Talk to me a little bit about some of the systems you've implemented uh, to be able to do two hundred and thirty transactions. Yeah, systems uh, again. Not having uh, where I lacked was the uh, you know the experience on the business side and having the systems and being intelligent enough to put them in place and. Uh, I'm very, um, you know, I'm, I'm very OCD, very regimented, very uh, type A personality. So I did the best with the knowledge I had. And, you know, once we start hitting that 200 mark, I was smart enough to realize that I wasn't intelligent enough to, to do this on my own and to get these systems in place on my own. So key component was, was getting, hiring, and retaining the right staff, um, that had the experience with that. That was one big component too. But the second thing I actually went out and uh, done is I uh, hired a uh, organizational uh, coach mm. and a lady, a girl I'd known in the past and worked with her at Prudential for years. And she did it at the corporate level for Prudential here in town. And now she's gone off and started her home, her own business. And I hired her for about a year and a half. Um, we met in four hour block sessions and we'd meet, oh, I think once a week. And that was the best thing I've ever done. She basically went through every step of my business, went through all of our systems, everything that we do, just set up a plan for everything, you know, spent a half a day with each of my employees to see where they were, what they were doing, what their work ethic was, what their time management was like. And so we basically broke it down from square one of my business and over a year and a half really got everything dialed into, you know, everything is systematic now. And, uh, if, if you don't have that and you're doing even 50 deals, yeah. your life's going to be a night, a nightmare. Yeah. Well, and again, I think that, I think it's really, really, it's that 50. If you can get to that 50 by 50, you should have that stuff in place. So, I mean, talk to, because pe- there's probably other people out there struggling and kind of, you know, similar to you. What, maybe can you outline some of the stuff? What, what can you share with the audience? Uh, about those as, systems? As far, yeah, as far as um, what the systems are or how we implemented them? or No, no, what, what the systems actually are. Yeah, so sure. We, um, you know, the, the big system is having our, I've tried and looked at three, four different, uh, you know, CRM, contact database systems, and um, we ended up coming back to uh, to Top Producer, and it's, Top Producer is one that really could handle everything we needed to do. So every, every part of our business is systematized from, you know, internet leads coming in to phone calls coming in. I mean, as soon as they come in, my customer care receptionist knows exactly what's going to happen. If it's an internet lead, she makes the initial contact and puts it in the top producer. It gets set up on the drip. It gets assigned to the person that's doing that. The person has an automatic, uh, task manager put in place so they know exactly how to follow up and when to follow up. Um, same thing with our transactions. You know, a new listing comes into place. We set up action plans in Top Producer for every every imaginable uh, system that could come in or any task that has to be done. New listing, new buyer comes in and gets assigned to the team members. It's almost like a conveyor belt. Every one of my team handles a certain aspect of the transaction. Mm. And again, I'm all employees and not, and not agents. So everyone knows what they do. They get prompted. There's no guessing. It's all set up in an action plan. Um, people come in in the morning, they open up their, you know, they open up their top producer. They know exactly what has to be done on that day. Um, so that really helped us as far as the follow up, the communication, and also keeping the transaction flowing in place. You know, not missing a home inspection, not missing a walkthrough, not missing an appraisal. All that stuff is completely systematic, where it, we it never gets missed. Got it. Okay. So, so to unpack to unpack that a little bit. Um, um, so a phone call comes in the the um who who the the your front desk person how does she know who to route that or or assign that call that lead to 
Um, well, again, that's all systematic too. It's she she knows that she's been doing it long enough. She knows the lead that comes in based on um, um, w- what market it is. We have multiple n- different niche markets that we work in, mm. and whatever market it comes in, she knows who it's going to be assigned to. Um, she makes if it's an internet if it's an internet lead, she makes the initial contact, initial email. If it's a phone call, she'll route it over to the person. Um, but yeah, I mean, we know exactly with every call that comes in who it's going to go to, and that's all systematized and in place as well. Now, now, what about you being the the overall lead guy? Do you what kind of things are in place for you to to you know? Do you have a dashboard where you can go, okay, you know, uh, X amount of internet leads came in and they went to Julie and and uh, as as well as phone calls and they went to Jim. And, you know, do yeah. so. What do you do in terms of managing that? Looking at their conversions, like, do you, how do you manage that? Sure, that that's all systematized too. Again, we um, we found that top producer can handle every aspect of the business that our team needed personally. I'm not sure it's going to work perfectly for every team, but for ours, it can handle everything. So once a month, we get a a dashboard print out of not just internet leads, but every lead that's been entered into our database, whether it's a repeat customer, a new customer, a new listing, a new buyer, an internet lead. And so I get a report on that once a month. Um, we also, uh, another valuable thing for listeners, if there's the real estate, for the real estate agents, um, you know, if, if, they're, if they're doing marketing, you know, how do you, how are they tracking their marketing? You know, if it's an internet lead, you can track it, but, the phone calls is where it gets tough to track it. Um, we put a system in place called Call Fire. Um, I'm sure you've probably heard of it. No. Familiar with it. No, no. So, um, really, really great system. Every every marketing piece that we do has um, a Call Fire number attached to it, so it's got its own trackable uh, phone number on it. So we have about I don't know exactly thirty to forty different marketing pieces that we do, whether it be a website, whether it be a, a flyer we're sending out, whether it be, you know, uh, a lead generation system that we're, we're working with or paying for, whatever we do, our, truly our Zillow, everything's got its own specific number. So I track that on a monthly basis as well. So we can see where those calls come in. The other good thing is uh, those calls are recorded. Um, we let the consumer know they're recorded and, I can be in Hawaii listening to how my office is handling these calls. I get an email with every call that comes through. Wow, man. Oh, uh, that's really, really how, and it's pretty reasonable. 40, 30, 40 lines. I think it costs us like $140 a month. Wow. Wow. Um, that's amazing. I, I, I yeah, I've not heard of that. Um, Callfire.com. Um, not, if you got multiple marketing, you're not using it, you should be. Or, or a similar. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Sure. Company, yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. They, they've been great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at that. I'll reach out to those guys. So so you, when you say you have 30 to 40 marketing pieces, um, uh, unpack that a little bit. Okay. Um, broken down, we um, – uh, let me just break down where our business comes from. We basically – one thing I was – smart enough to do getting into this business was build a database and keep it. That's been a huge component of our success. Yeah. And, you know, try to have minimum of between four and six different uh, avenues where we're generating income. Um, especially with Las Vegas being as dynamic of a market it is, you know, we can be up 50% one year and then down 50% the next year. Yeah. And our number of transactions can go from 5,000 a month to 2,000 a month. And so it's just a very volatile, dynamic market. Um, so we have basically five main different avenues where we try to generate our income. Okay. Um, one being focused on, we have a big niche with residential portfolio building with investors um, big high rise niche. That's one of the reasons our numbers drop so much is the high rise. I'm sorry, the short sale niche. Mm. And that was the one main reason we lost our numbers because of that, that volume going away. Um, big, big high rise niche. We, our team's the number one team in real estate uh, transactions and closed transactions in high rise. That's over half of our business. Um, and so we do a lot of marketing. We have a lot of different websites. Um, any newsletter that we send and any different piece of marketing that we send out, it's got a different number on it. 
Um, and again, like homes.com, trulia.com, Zillow, all those third party real estate sites, we also have our own individual call fire number on. So we're able to track everything. Yeah. Well, um, even more than that, um, I mean, you could do, you could do a B split testing on that, right? So I mean, you could, you could create a, a flyer, um, Send in one color and one kind of you know tagline or or whatever. Yeah. Um, and and a different. That's amazing, man. Um. So so out I, of I, all, I'm not that intelligent. I I haven't gotten that creative <laughs> yet. But um, I have been smart enough to figure out where. Well, the problem is, you know, we get these. I we have a busy office. Phones are ringing off the hook all the time, and I'm always trying to track where it's coming in. And my you know my customer care rep Scott three calls on the line and you know a new listing comes in and so my high-rise manager calls her back and i'm like well where'd that come from she's like i didn't have time to find out right so and any of the calls we don't miss that anymore um it, it, oh, you describing your office almost it sounds it you know i i'm the vision i'm getting is like almost like a wall street trading you know room <laughs> you know what, what, i guess you could <clears throat> um so what is this high-rise niche i i, I what is that well, we um, since I've gotten to the business was right when the high rises were really taking off in uh, Las Vegas, and uh, you know I, I really started got involved with some marketing, some websites, and uh, you know we just really built built up a large database of high rise clients. Um, we uh, market and farm to multiple owners and different high rises, and uh, you know we've just been able to to build it up where. Uh, we close at least a hundred transactions a year from our high rises. Yeah, but Jim, Jim, when you say high rise, I mean, are, are these high condos? What, what, what? Yeah, all yeah, okay. high rise condos. Okay. Um, we do we do a lot with condo hotels since we work with a lot of investors. Um, but then you know you're also your traditional high rises too that people you know have as a second home or rent long term and are living and you know our high rise market in Las Vegas isn't real large. It's very very small. There's only about 15, 16 different total high rises in the whole town, and all of them but one are, you know, within a mile of the strip. Well, I mean, look, you for not having a, a business background. I mean, you certainly got up to speed really quickly. Uh, how, how? Where did you get this background? I mean, you know what I mean. This, you know, thirty to forty marketing pieces. You got call fire. I mean, like how? And you keep saying you keep you keep you know yourself deprecating uh, uh, yourself on this show. I'm not that smart. I'm not that smart. But clearly, your your results say something different. How did you learn this without having this background? Um, I think a lot of it was just being uh, having common sense and uh, you know really always looking at my business. And I, I think I was smart enough to realize when I didn't know something. <laughs> Got it. And uh, so when I when I realized that I couldn't figure it out, then I would uh, spend the money or do what I had to do to to hire someone or bring someone in that, that could help me from where I lacked on that level. And that was that's really been the key to success. Yeah, well, okay, well, let's talk about that because, because it, I would say that, that you figured it out today but the, with that time period that you were working a hundred hours a week, you didn't figure it out then. So at what point, no. at what point, Jim, did you go from, you know, a hundred hours a week to a more manageable time period? And, and, and what was that first hire? Um, well, yeah, that was after about two years when I hired, uh, first, uh, after about a year and a half, um, I hired my first assistant um, you know, a lot of it, like I said, I just feel like I was blessed and the right door open to get into real estate at the time that I did because you know, I got in in 2003 and Vegas was just starting Going to take crazy, off. crazy, yeah. And, you know, I, my first full year in the business, I uh, closed over $20 million in sales and did it without being brand new and without <laughs> an assistant or without anyone. That was the other reason I was working so many hours because I couldn't keep up. Um, so a lot of that was, it's, it's much more difficult now. You enter the market today versus when I got into it and, uh, it's, it's just not the same. You're going to have a, a lot more hills to climb and a lot more obstacles. And, uh, so, you know, that, that part I'm fortunate of, but it, yeah, it's about after a year and a half, I hired my first assistant just because I realized that, you know, staying up till three, four in the morning, 
uh, writing files and typing up paperwork and just wasn't the best use of my time. No. Um, especially when we were bringing in that kind of revenue and that kind of, uh, you know, those kinds of numbers so quickly. So I brought my first assistant in and, uh, um, just a, a side note on that for people trying to tap into the business or get into the business, uh, again, not having the business background. The only thing I was, I was able to figure out is I was at a big credential office with 400 agents and, you know, I'd go into the office every morning and I'm like, well, I was smart enough to realize I wasn't going to get any business sitting there. <laughs> and so, uh, I, uh, I started my whole business with open houses. I did open houses my first two years of the business and I did them, you know, I didn't do them just on weekends. I did them five, six days a week and I did them for eight to 10 hours at a time. I was basically wow. in my office. Wow, man. Well, and so, and so how I, I'm, I'm assuming that that was successful for you. Yeah, that's, that was, I had no business. I was a traveling RN, moved here, didn't know anyone, never worked at even a specific hospital. I worked in different ERs all over town. So I really didn't have any close relationships with anyone. So I had really a very small sphere of influence to uh, start my business with. So I started all with open houses. Yeah. I closed, uh, my first dozen transactions, I think, off of them. Well, so so um, here's what I'm hearing out. You know, is today people are not. And maybe it was just that was just the time frame. I don't know because um, the market was hot. But today people are 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 starting to leverage open houses more and more. But they're not doing it to find buyers. They're doing it to to find other listings. Yeah, I think. I mean, um, I, I think that's from the experience I had. Um, I think that's a, a tough approach. I mean, unless you're marketing differently, I was basically just going out and grabbing a half a dozen signs, a dozen signs and putting the balloons on them every day and, uh, just getting as much traffic as I could. And I was just strictly, uh, uh, after buyers, very little listing captivation off of my open houses. So. Hmm. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even know how to go about trying to uh, <laughs> well, to again, approach that from the yeah, listening side. Yeah, and again, this is this is you know we're in different markets. You know, the O three and and twenty fifteen are different um, right. different animals. So, but look, let me let me go back. Um, you, you you said you always want to have four to six uh, lead channels. Uh, we talked about um, uh, a niche residential. I, I think builders. Uh, we got your. We had your short sale um, uh, channel. We have your high rise niche, and then we started. You jumped into marketing from there. What are what are the, some of the other two? I think you said you had five. Yeah the uh, the other uh, another one would be obviously internet internet traffic. Yep. Um, you know we uh, I have uh, have a high rise website, and then our our main website LasVegasHomes dot Vegas, and. Um, we um so we generate traffic from there. I have a full time SEO and marketing uh employee that works for me full time. Um and basically all she does is work on my websites. Hmm. Uh you know, and we tried all these uh we do the Trulia and the Zillow and uh it's just we have I haven't been able to be very profitable. They're just too expensive, they're too yeah. watered down and it's just uh you know, we haven't been able to have any success in that. So we dump our own money into our, I'd rather dump my money in my site, something I can grow and get continued growth from the future than, you know, Zillow or some of these other places, which some people have real good success with. And it's just, not that many. Stop that pay, as soon as you stop that paycheck, yeah. your lead stops. So there's no, there's no value where you can build for your future. Whereas if you're putting it into your own personal website, you can. I agree. I, I fully agree with that. And again, I'm not. I'm not finding uh, very many people um, winning today on uh, on on Zillow or Trulia. Um, how many websites do you have? I, I just googled you right now. Uh, how many websites do you have, Jim? Um, we have three right now that are active. Um, Signature High Rise. One of the niche products I do is uh, Las Vegas uh, um, MGM Signature, big property condo hotels. Okay. Um, and uh, that's been one of our big niches that we've, I started with that and we've hit it very hard from hard copy marketing to the internet to, you know, I've closed over 600 uh, units in those three towers since they nice. were built in 2004. And so now we've taken that system and implemented it into, uh, it's, 
pretty new in the last year, but now we're going into basically every tower in town. So we're trying to implement that system on all the high rises in town. And it's going to be an 18 to 24 month uh, investment, I think, to really see the the results but you know we're trying to grow and set up for the future well and look i love that i love that i was almost going to ask you a question similar to that you know what are you doing to plant seeds today i love that you're planting seeds today and you're not thinking about how can jim win in 2015 but you're going hey how can jim win and set himself up for 2017 right 2018 so i think right. that i think that long-term view is is something that uh, you know successful people have and, and and most people other don't now do you have do you have have uh, an expired or FISBO channel that you work on? Um, I I do not up until uh, up until recently. We're just working on uh, on putting that system in place. Um, but I have never I have never used those either of those FISBOs or expires. I've never had any uh, revenue or systems in place for them. But we're actually working on something right now. Yeah, you want me? I uh, want me share some uh, some inside info with you. Yeah, about Vegas, baby. Uh, so Florence, Florence Shapiro, you know Florence. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just had lunch with Ivan last week. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ivan's a cool guy. I've had I've had both Florence and Ivan on the show. Well, so then you, then this is not inside. So I mean, Florence shared with me. Um, uh, that they, because she only does this, Florence Shapiro, for everybody in the audience, she only does luxury, you know, million dollar plus houses. Um, so she shared with me that she has a, both an expired and FISBO channel for these million and two million dollar houses. And I said, are you like, how does that's, that can't work? And she says, it's absolutely working. So um, I don't know who else is playing with that, but I know they have a great name in that in that luxury market. But uh, maybe, yeah. maybe you could be that number two guy in that you know working on those uh, on that you know million dollar. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's uh, you know opportunity, and it's you know it's just getting the using your resources and leveraging them, and uh, you know you're you're in the business. You're either you're either prospecting or you're marketing, and. I've had my years of prospecting kind of burnt out on that yeah. in the open houses. And so, you know, all of our efforts now, when you get to that point we, where you can convert over to marketing, I believe you can have more success on the marketing side, but you know, it's all, it's all based off the dollar you want to put into it. Yeah, I, yeah that's true. Uh, but I would, I would say in addition to that, in addition to, you know, prospecting marketing, when, when you can figure out your marketing and it's put $1 in, get three back or, or lose one, right? Um, uh, you can make, you can, your business becomes much more predictable in that fashion rather than prospecting. Right. It's, it's, you know, it's more hours, right? Um, Right. So, so what you're you're doing all this stuff? You're doing all, you know all these thirty to forty marketing pieces. You're tracking everything. What is working for you? What what is the one thing that you're seeing that that is consistently giving you results? Um, the the I would say there's two there's two items that we get consistent results off of, and uh, uh, first and foremost, our most consistent, most reliable uh, form of income is our database. Right. Um, like I said, I was one thing I was smart enough. I didn't really, when I started, I didn't know what I was doing, but I figured if I, all these people I come in touch with, I didn't have a database when I started. So when I got one, I was, uh, held it pretty tightly. Um, we've done an incredible job of, uh, building our, of building our database. I think we're pretty close to about 10,000 clients. Oh, wow. And we, uh, market to them regularly. You know, a lot of people have a database, but, if you don't stay in touch with them, it doesn't do you any good. Um, that's the other thing. Top producers have been great. We have uh, our graphic designer create all custom templated um, mass emails. So, you know, every time we're sending a mass email, it's customize our logos, getting in front of people every time we send it. And it's the same look. And, you know, it's one way of us working on branding ourselves to at least our database. And, you know, we sell... Oh, geez, 70 to 100 transactions a year come from our database and existing clients. And that usually comes off of sending out property alerts. Property alerts. Um, yeah, deal of the day. Um, we mm. have all kinds of stuff. We mix it up. Um, and a lot of those are from the high-rise side of it because we have a hot, lot of high-rise clients, especially a lot of that are investors. So that's our, uh, that's definitely our baby from the team. That's very, very consistent. Um, but we stay in touch with them. You know, we're hitting them probably, we try not to overkill. Yeah. 
Um, but we, we hit them probably three times a week. Three times uh, a week? Market, yeah. How do you not get people unsubscribing left and right? Very, very few. I just went through. We just That was one of the things that we cleaned up. And over the last, I haven't done it. I finally got organized. Over the last five years, we, uh, we haven't cleaned it up at all. And we just went in and uh, out of about 10,000 people, I think we had 840 unsubscribes. And we clean those up, and uh, we watch and track them. If they don't subscribe, we contact them and make sure that they, uh, you know, some of our clients have accidentally done it. Some have said, you know, yeah, I just prefer not to be contacted anymore. But, yeah, we have very low turnover on that. They, there is an unsubscribe button if they, uh, yeah. you know, if they decide they don't want to get our information. But most of the stuff that we send is, uh, you know, pertinent. These people are, we're their, we're their real estate resource for Las Vegas, and, you know, if, when they want to be up on the market, we don't, you know, send them out how to plant a tulip or bake a pie or anything like that. But, you know, everything yeah. we're sending is related to either market conditions, new opportunities. Hey, we just had this great short sale fall through. Or, hey, there's just this new listing at, uh, you know, down at Trump on the Strip. And uh, so everything is very relevant to Las Vegas real estate. So... So uh, this is I'm going to ask you something and this is this is going to be good for the for the audience. So I'm on your site right now because I, I cuz you know look I love getting into somebody like your funnel. I want to see how you do it. I want to see the stuff that you send out. Um but I you don't have you, okay, I'm going to I'm going to hit the only way I can give you my info. What? I just okay, there we go. So contact us. So there's you don't an internet marketer, right? And, and when you said you had 10,000 people, I assumed that, you know, you were kind of an, uh, an, an actual like marketer guy where, you know, I go to your site and, and you prompt me, whether it's a, a, a pop-up box or prompt me to give you my info. You know, maybe it's a, a book giveaway. There's none of that. I just have to hit contact us. Now, if I put in my information on contact us, do I get into your sales funnel? Yeah, well, if you um, if you put in the contact information, it'll get uh, routed into my uh, it'll go into my front office. Okay. And my front office will reach out and contact you. And um, yeah, we're pretty. I mean, we're we're not just dumping everyone into there. We're pretty specific who we dump into there. So if they, uh, you know, if it's a, a real lead or interested buyer, um, we have different separations and different components yep, yep. in our in our database. So if it's just the lead, there's been no contact or conversion. They they still go into our top producer, but they're going to be under a category that will be dis that'll be deleted out if we haven't made contact. Okay, so, so what you won't necessarily automatically go into it. I got you. Okay, so so why don't why aren't you um, why don't you have another tab here that says you know. I, I, I don't know. So it says sellers. What's my home worth? Sell your home. Blah, blah, blah. Um, nothing for buyers. Uh, how come you're not like giving an ebook away, like surfacing an ebook right here? You know how to get the most money for your for your uh, high rise condo, and and get people's. Yeah, that's a good good thought. I don't have an ebook. Yeah, we, we can write one. You can go rip one off. Somebody's got one out there. <laughs> Right. Uh, anyhow, okay. Well, I, th I think I just – and I only bring that up because that's – very few real estate agents are marketing like internet marketers and, and uh, you right. know, provide, giving an ebook away in exchange for an email address is a good way, a good easy way to do that. And you can all – you know, if you write – if you, people who are going to download the, how to get the most money for, for my high-rise condo, I mean, you clearly you know that they're a seller and most likely they're going to be right. on that uh, high-rise. So, so I mean, uh, two more things on your database – well, number one, how did you build it to 10,000? Um, just uh, very, very consistent. Um, even from when I started back in the day by myself, I've always kept some content, you know, some kind of CRM system. And, um, you know, I haven't always done the best job of keeping in touch with these people for a number of years when it was just me and an assistant. I just, you know, I didn't have the systems in place and was too busy. So, um, you know, now that we have the staff and the manpower, we're, we're really diligent about, um, about keeping up with it. But, you know, every time you come in touch with, uh, we come in touch with a possible contact that's a client, whether it be from our sphere of influence or it'd be someone I met from being in the business. You know, I don't have, uh, we don't have other real estate agents in our database unless they're out of state as a potential, uh, you know, as a potential referring agent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we keep it really isolated to who sees 
who sees who and who sees what from, from our, uh, from our database. But yeah, you know, 11 years, if you think about it, it's not that it's just being consistent. We average, I would say three to four people a day that we're, um, adding to our database. Wow. Okay. That's great. Um, um, uh, and so I, I, I'm playing on your site and I went to a listing when I click to look on it. I'm why sit, si, sign up now for free. Why join? And I can't get out of this. I can't get out of this. I'm hitting. I, it looks like I, it looks like this is a forced registration here. Um, yeah, I don't know. To be honest with you. Yeah. I don't know too much about it. Um, <laughs> I, you just uh, know that I, it I, works. I got, a guy, I got a guy that does it full time. So yeah. Technology and websites and internet, you're, you're, you're not going to get a lot of knowledgeable information out of me on that. Again, I realized that was my, that was my, one of my biggest weaknesses. You know, um, I never even used the computer. So I think I was in my third year of college. So, um, you know, I'm definitely not the most computer technology savvy, but again, I real realized, uh, I was smart enough to realize I needed that. So I just hired someone full time. Right, right. I mean, look, you know what you don't know, and you go and hire somebody for it. I think that's awesome. So, so two more questions on your on your on your database. One, um, so do you grade your database? Do you grade it into uh, not only buyers and sellers, but A plus B, C, D? You know, we we used to, um, and just kind of got away from doing that. the The database has gotten so big that there's really no value in grading the database unless you're going to actually do something with it. Yeah. Yep. You know, unless you're going to reach out to your A plus clients, and, <laughs> you know, you're going to call, you're going to step, have your lunch meetings right. or your pop buys or whatever you're going to do. There's, there's really no value in, uh, in grading them. So we, we have them graded in another way and it's based off of their activity level. So are they, um, you know, are they a new client that hasn't had contact made? Are they active in the pipeline, uh, currently looking to buy or sell? Are they a future client? And then we set up our systems based off of that. Got it. Okay. Um, and then the, my last question on the database is, uh, is what kind of mail client do you use that you can actually send out 10,000 emails or, or 30,000 emails a week? Uh, we send right to your top producer. Really? Yeah, it's very, very smooth system. It takes literally seconds to send out. And then, um, you know, we, uh, all of our, uh, all of our clients, that's the other thing that we went, when I hired this organizational person, we went back through every single client in our database and did the best that we could to, um, to put a contact type with them and source them, what kind of contact they are and where they came from. Yeah. Um, so we can pinpoint market. We do a lot of pinpoint, you know, we send out probably two high rise, um, listings or new opportunities a week. And so we're not blasting these single family, you know, we got Mr. and Mrs. Smith, who I just sold a house to in Henderson. They don't want, they don't want to be seeing two high rise listings a week. So we can pinpoint whoever we want to send it to. So usually we just group that into where we, send the high rise listings to our high rise database. Um, and then we, we cut out the other portion of it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, uh, now uh, just, just so I know the honestness. So is there, uh, uh, there has to be an extra cost to be for that, the kind of email for, with, no. with it. No, no, I might go get, top yeah, no, I have like, uh, I think I, I think I spend about, I spend quite a bit on top. I mean, well, compare, you know, you can get a top producer account for like 40 bucks a month. But yeah. I think we have like eight accounts because I have, um, you know, my agent has one. I have the master one. My vice president, of my company has another master one. And then my front desk reception people are at them and they have, they have an admin account and my sales manager has an account. So with like seven or eight accounts, it's still, I think it's like 280 a month. Um, but no, unlimited, unlimited emails. You know, I have a, a different, uh, I use that e-pro campaigns. Um, we do some mass marketing email, uh, to some other sources that aren't in our database. So we use that. So I don't get my database, uh, too watered down or, you know, too big where we can't manage it. But yeah, no, it's, uh, if someone's going to use it, what, what I do recommend though is pay a graphic designer 
couple hundred bucks and we created uh, templates for yeah. every different type of marketing piece that we do. So different, different header on it. Footer's always the same, always pounding our logo and our branding out to them. Just much more professional. You know, it's not your standard text, uh, yeah. text email, but yeah. Okay. Well, that's good stuff. I'm, I'm surprised the top producer doesn't have already templates built in like an AWeber or MailChimp or something. Well, they, they do. Um, but again, I wanted to, uh, you know, we're to the point in our business where everything we do finally getting organized enough where, you know, now we're working on our brand, you know, as much as we are a business. Got it. So we, we just custom create everything to, uh, to our logo and our brand. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I got it. You know, um, well, okay. That's enough on email, but I, I have some other comments on it, but I, I don't think they're great for anybody or the, the audience. So, um, all right, we're going to start wrapping up here, man. I'm going to ask you the same three questions I ask everybody. And the first one I'm interested in, who has been your mentor, Jim? Ooh, man, who's been my mentor? Um, I have, I cannot answer that question. I never had a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> that's and you have you ever had a coach um no i mean i we played around like a little bit where i used some of the uh brian buffini referral yeah. systems yep. and stuff and i still i still have a pretty good um we do a lot of referral we really that's the one component i didn't mention a referral business is pretty significant we track uh we have a full system in place. We track every referral, where it comes from. The second the referral comes in, there's a card and a gift going out to uh, whoever sent it. And um, I get a monthly report on how I think we average around 100. Our goal is like 150 to 200 referrals a year. Um, and I think we're right around 150 right now. Um, we consider referral or referral. It could be calling us to buy a, a dumpster in the ghetto. You know, it's the uh, well, we. Um, you know, it's not based off of closing the yeah. transaction. It's based off of getting our re, our referring partners, the uh, you know, trained and uh, that they know if they send us a referral, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. We're gonna we're gonna send them out something. And we're gonna thank them for it, and uh, it's just so we track it off of the actual referral, not the closing. Yeah, of course. I mean, a referral is a referral. Um, um, how do you you know if you say that you train your referral partners, which that means you encourage your your past clients to refer you? What, what does that what does that look like? Training your you know your referral partners. Well, I think uh, a lot of this I learned when I started back with uh, you know I followed Brian Buffini's system a couple of years. I don't follow it anymore, but I feel I took enough of the knowledge off of it to where I just kind of customized my own. Uh, my own system, and it's real basic, you know, it's uh, the talking to people and uh, especially people that are referring or new people, uh, you know, letting our quality clients know that a significant amount of our business comes from referral, and it's our quality clients that usually refer us other quality people to work with, and um, so one is asking for it, constantly asking for it, mm. and um, two is, is when we get it, uh, you know, it's like Pavlog's dog, they send us a referral, and uh, I mean, unless it's a Friday at five o'clock, there's a a letter with some kind of gift card going out into the mail, movie tickets, gift card, restaurant uh, gift certificates going out in the mail that day. They'll have it the next day or the day after. Oh wow, um, wow! And so you know, people see that they send you a referral, especially if you like you get it in the morning, goes out in the morning mail, and the next day they're in California and they get a they get a thank you card with a. Uh, you know, a Starbucks gift certificate in it 24 hours from when they gave you the referral. It, uh, you know, it's not what the gift is. It's just, you know, it's the thought and actually doing it and uh, being on top of it. Now, yeah, no, I agree. So, so w w what you said, you said, you know, asking for the referral and constantly asking for it. Now, is there, a, is there a tagline or, or in your emails? Do you constantly hit them? Is that message in your emails constantly? Yeah, you know, we kind of go back and forth on that. I think we had it in for a while, and uh, I don't, I, <laughs> I don't have to say, I have to look at email. I don't, I don't think we use it anymore. Okay. Um, I just think it's a little bit, you know, it gets a little bit impersonal. I usually hand type it into my a lot of my emails, and uh, I just use, uh, you know, a couple, a uh, couple different key phrases. I've used them a million times over, and. Uh, 
you know, one is, you know, let people know. I said, you know, when I talk to my quality people, I said, uh, you know, what I found, if, uh, if we don't ask for the referral, we don't receive the referral. So you have a successful team and you're doing a lot of business. And so people just automatically assume that you don't need any more business. Mm. So I, I just tell people, I'm like, you know, we found out from our quality, you know, VIP customers like you have know, found out that if we don't let you know that over half of our business is done by referral, we won't get the referral. So we need to, you know, we need to let you know that we, this is how we do work and it allows us, you know, to spend more time not out there looking for business, but to focus on our clients and taking care of them and handling the transaction. And, um, you know, so I just, I'm just real honest with them. Just let them know that. Yeah. Okay. Good. I love it. Um, so I'm going to ask for, I always ask for a book recommendation. So here's a setup. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Um, inspiring agent have 25 bucks. Um, I think my, and I'm not a big reader myself. I can tell you, I've only read a few of them, but, um, uh, would be a million dollar real estate agent. Yeah. That comes up too much, man. That I, I, I need to, you know what I need to do is I need to prep you guys and say, look, I'm going to, I'm going to think about a book recommendation and, um, I need to, I need to be better at that with my guests. Well, listen, that is or, a, that is a, come up with a better or come up with a better question. <laughs> well, no, well, here's, here's why I'm asking, that, why I asked that question is because we have a, we have a deal with audible where you, we can give away a free book. So, so, okay. so that's why I, I asked the question. Cause then I go, Hey, if you haven't read that book, uh, you know, this, you know, I go, go to our, our link, audible trial.com slash super agents live and get a book on us. So, um, so I, so that's, a, I have to ask that question just to give away a book. So well, what, what answer would you like me to give? And so I know for next time, <laughs> I'll prep you for next time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. um, so, so look, the, the, my last question to you, and I think I know the answer, but I want to ask it anyway, is do you have a personal habit, Jim, that, that you feel has contributed to your success? Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, the personal habit, like drinking alcohol, that's kind of like an after-hour <laughs> habit. Yeah. Uh, that probably hasn't contributed to my success, though, but it, it, it helps me handle the business, I think, a glass of wine at night. Um, glass of wine. The, um, I would say, I'll, I, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll kill a bottle uh, quick. Well, I know. I just don't want to sound like I'm a <laughs> raging alcoholic on a radio show. <laughs> so we can talk about that later. Um, I would say, yeah, my biggest attribute is probably just my personality. Uh, a type personality. I'm very, very OCD almost to the, I mean, it's, it's, it's made me successful and it's still a positive thing, but yeah. you know, it's, I'm just very, very organized. So I probably spend my time management isn't the best because I'm probably straightening out pencils and papers that are crooked on my desk for a half an hour out of the day. That's but funny. once I get everything in its place, then I think it's, uh, it actually has, uh, been a huge part of my success. Just making sure everything is, is organized. And, you know, when, you get this much traffic and this much business going, you just, if you don't have that, you're just, you're going to, at some point you're going to get just drowned. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, you know what I thought you were going to say is, is your work ethic. I know that's what got you off the ground early and I thought that was going to be your personal habit, but well, I think that kind of, kind of goes hand in hand with it. Uh, the, the drive and the A type personality is what, um, yeah, created the work ethic and, you know, any, what I tell people I've now that we're one of the, the larger teams in town, we've been blessed being successful. I do a lot of talks and I do a lot of shows and a lot of meetings and stuff, especially with my company, Realty One Group. And, uh, you know, I, I tell people the same thing all the time. It's really not a hard business. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely no, uh, Einstein by any means. And, uh, but if you get into the business, you have a good work ethic, you worked hard and you're willing to do whatever it takes to be successful. And you, uh, you know, you put your clients first and you're always honest, honest and ethical. I mean, the clients pick up on that right away. So yep. everyone knows when they work with us that they know that they're never going to get screwed over. They know whether it means us losing a commission or a transaction. My whole office knows this, that, you know, that's just one thing that I won't tolerate is, uh, with my team and staff and they're all the same as I am. It's always, 
the customer's always right. We always take care of them. We're always honest with them. And if we, uh, we lose the deal, it'll come back and we'll get five more from doing the right thing. Boom. Boom, man. This has been a great episode. I think, uh, I think the title for the, uh, an episode like this should be like what they don't teach in business school, uh, with Jim, Jim Brooks. Hey, Jim, here's the deal, man. I always recommend my audience, if they've got anything out of this episode, is reach out and say thank you to my guest, which is you. So where can people find you? Um, the best place to find me would be email. Um, email address is Jim at Vegas one, which is the numeral real estate.com. Got so it. Jim at Vegas one real estate.com. And listen, everybody, if you, if you want to thank Jim on his email and you're driving, walking your dog, riding your bike, whatever you're doing, all this will be on the website. Go to superagentslive.com and look for Jim Brooks. Hey Jim, I'll be the first one to kick off the thank you train. Hey man. I know you're a super busy guy with a big team doing a ton of deals. So I, I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day and sharing with me and my audience. Yeah, happy to do it. And if anyone in the audience out there, uh, real estate agents, has any referrals for Las Vegas Henderson, we work with uh, we work with a lot of referring agents. So got to always ask for those referrals. Absolutely. Or email me. Yeah, 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 for sure. Cool, Jim. Hey, man, uh, let's keep in touch, bud. You got it. God bless you. Have a great day. See you, pal. Thanks again. Bye. Let's go. Yeah. For those of you that want to know what we're all about, it's like this, yo. This is 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power.